Here at the Moto IQ Garage, you probably hear us talking about WPC treatment a lot. WPC treatment is something we use whenever we can on engine builds. And to get into a little bit more detail about what WPC is, um, well, we've got some parts here and let's explain. WPC isn't a coating like what a lot of people think, but it's actually a metal treatment that actually uh, conditions the surface of the metal that turns it into a slippery, hard, crack resistant surface that uh, really, really improves how everything goes from wear to long-term life. Let me explain how it works. Now, uh, for WPC, uh, the surface of the part is bombarded with a almost microscopically small ceramic ball at really high velocities. Now it's really important to use a really hard ceramic ball that's perfectly round so uh, you don't get little jagged um, asperities in the surface. So part of the secret is small, the other part of the secret is round and really hard. Um, what this does is it imparts a um, like a really smooth finish on the surface. Um, it's way smoother than what can be obtained with polishing or traditional micro finishing. Uh, another thing it does is it actually changes the metallurgy of the surface. Um, on a microscopic level, it actually uh, compresses the metal and uh, impl put, imparts a lot of force into it. What this does is it refines the grain of the metal and makes the grain smaller, finer, um, it's compressed and there's compressive stress in the surface and this makes it a lot harder for a crack to start in the surface and propagate down into the metal below. Uh, what this does is it greatly improves fatigue strength because uh, a lot of what happens when something, you get a fatigue fracture is the um, a crack propagates on the surface and then it keeps on going right through the core of the metal till you get a failure. So in this finely grained stressed skin, uh, it's really hard for that to happen. So in the number of cycles a part can do before failure, you generally uh, more than double it with WPC. Um, this compressed surface with really fine grain is also uh, harder than what the surface was. So it's kind of like making um, a really tight grain of wood, like something like hard maple is a lot harder than pine because uh, of the tight, hard grain. It's kind of like what you're doing on the surface of the metal. You're actually changing the crystalline structure of the metal to make it uh, harder, more homogeneous, and finer. The surface is also more wear resistant. Um, in typical wear, things that slide against each other, like maybe camshafts, piston rings, piston skirts, cylinder walls, uh, we could usually get double the life out of a surface that's been WPC'd. A lot of it's because of this fine grain structure. Um, WPC also produces a really even surface. Uh, the process knocks down all the little things sticking up. We call them asperities. Uh, defects from machining processes, and um, it's even better than polishing. Uh, we can demonstrate that right here. Uh, we have a piece of stainless steel here. Uh, half of it's been mirror polished. I mean, that I think this thing actually used to be a mirror. I mean, it's totally shiny. You don't get any smoother than that. And the other part has been uh, WPC treated, and this is a uh, regular old cam follower. Um, it's just a used cam follower out of one of our engines, uh, and it's used even, it's not brand new. So I'm gonna put it on the polished side and give it a spin here, and it's pretty smooth, but you know, it spins just a little bit. And you look at the WPC side and you think, huh, that looks dull. There's no way that that's gonna have less friction than this polished side, but check this out. I can just barely twist it and it spins for a really long time with the same amount of force. So, I mean, this is direct metal to metal with no lubrication. The real microscopically pebbly surface that WPC creates also like holds oil and lubricant. So that actually, you know, um, encourages a better film of oil. Uh, another thing about WPC is the, um, with the ceramic media, they also put in uh, different dry lubricants. It could be molybdenum, it could be zinc, 
It's some kind of uh, dry film lubricant. The exact constitution of it, of it is kind of a secret. WPC won't tell us, but uh, it is a dry film lubricant. And while you're um, blasting the surface with the media, the lubricant actually gets um, embedded and kind of incorporated into the uh, new fine grain surface. So you get some lubricity from that as well. Here's another part. Um, this is just a piece of stainless steel with a um, bushing over it, and there's like a three ten thousandths clearance between the two. You just spin it, and it wants to go forever. There's no lubrication or anything. It's just a WPC treatment. The tolerances of these parts are so tight that they actually act like an air spring. See that? I let my finger drop and it just drops right through. If we had untreated stainless surfaces, they would just totally gall. We use WPC for a lot of things on the engines for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we have this, this crankshaft here. Uh, we WPC the journals and the fillets of the crank. Uh, the journals we WPC for longer wear and less friction with the bearings. Uh, the fillets is um, so there's less chances of a crack propagating there. On the crankshaft, the fillet is where most of the stress is concentrated, and that's usually where the root is where a crank will develop a crack and break. We WPC the camshaft, and we also uh, do the followers if it's not DLC coded. If it's DLC, uh, DLC is highly compatible with WPC, and that's actually a really good combination to reduce friction. Uh, you have like a lot of rub, rubbing force, and there's a lot of friction here, and there's a lot of wear also. Uh, when we WPC a cam and followers, they generally almost don't wear out. Uh, like we've had uh, engines with three, four racing seasons at least, and everything's perfectly good. Uh, you know, usually you want to replace your cam and followers after a couple seasons, but uh, we find with WPC treatment, the cams, uh, unless something messes up, they can last like indefinitely almost. A lot of times we'll WPC treat the rod and especially the rod bolts. The rod bolts are highly stressed and they're subject to high cycle fatigue. WPC treatment to reduce crack propagation and fatigue failure in there goes a long way as cheap insurance. Uh, same thing with your rod. Your rod's pretty highly stressed and it can really reduce the chance of fatigue failure. Uh, another thing I like to do is I like to WPC the valves and the valve stems. A lot of engines, especially like uh, overhead valve engines like um, Chevys and Fords that have push rods, we run bigger valves, higher valve spring tensions, and uh, that puts a lot more stress on everything. A lot of times you could drop a valve if like the uh, keeper groove gets beat out or um, you get a fatigue failure right at the keeper groove. You never want to drop a valve because that's normally bad news. So the, uh, less fatigue failure. Um, overhead valve engines and engines with finger followers, like a uh, double overhead cam, a lot of engines have finger followers nowadays. Uh, they put more side load on the valve like that, so the valve guide wears out and the stem wears out more. Uh, you get aggressive mechanical roller cams and they put a lot of side load, a lot of spring tension, and a lot of going up and down, a lot of load there. Also, um, a lot of engines nowadays that uh, we do force induction and, and the temperatures go up and up. Uh, we use uh, Inconel valves and they tend to gall the guides, so this prevents galling. Um, a lot of the Chevys have really big intake valves nowadays, and to reduce weight, use a titanium intake valve and that titanium tends to gall the valve guide too, and this completely stops it when you WPC treat the stem. Uh, another handy area is the uh, valve springs and the retainers. Uh, valve springs are like really highly stressed in an engine and really prone to fatigue failure. Uh, we've had some engines that um, have an aggressive mechanical roller cam and uh, generally we would have to change the valve springs like every four events uh, as preventative so we wouldn't get a valve spring failure which could cause a valve to drop. Uh, once we started WPCing the valve springs, 
uh, they can last a whole season, like 10 events and you know, uh, preseason and postseason testing. So we've probably almost tripled the life of the valve spring. On a really aggressive engine, if you have like a titanium retainer, uh, the retainer chafes and gets worn out where it rubs against the spring and it also gets uh, worn out where the keepers are and the keepers start sinking down. And when the keepers sink, the retainer goes up, you lose valve spring tension. Um, you can also drop a valve easily because this hole gets bigger and the, the keepers don't fit in the keeper groove as much. So um, WPC treating the uh, retainers has really cut that down. Um, so it's like cheap insurance there. Uh, the other thing is the valve springs get really hot um, and they produce like a lot of oil heating and you know they can also get damaged from the heat they, they create on themselves. Um, the uh, valve springs run cooler once they've been WPC treated too. So overall, um, valve springs are a really good thing to, to do the treatment on. We have our piston here. Now this piston has been uh, coated on the skirt, so we don't do the skirts. Um, if you don't opt for coating, uh, WPC is a really good thing to put on skirts, but uh, a lot of times we want to coat just because it's maybe a little easier on the cylinder walls or we want to make up some clearance. Or uh, like, let's say you're building an engine, you're really noise sensitive. Uh, coating allows us to close up the piston and wall clearance pretty tight. Uh, and then we wouldn't uh, WPC the skirt, just use uh, coating. But we always WPC um, above the coating this area, like here, actually creates a lot of frictional rub. And also we want a WPC down inside the ring grooves. Uh, that prevents micro welding. So when an engine's running and you have a lot of combustion pressure, there's a lot of downward force on your, on your compression rings. And that can actually force the ring into the bottom of the groove and, and cause it to gall and actually stick. They call it micro welding. And uh, that causes the ring not to float on the piston. You lose ring seal. Also, you get erosion of the groove. And then you start to get flutter because the clearance starts to open up. Um, and WPC treatment really reduces the likelihood of that from happening. Um, we WPC treat inside the uh, piston uh, pin boss. Uh, less friction in there, less wear and we WPC treat the uh, pin. Less friction, less wear, less likely to have a fatigue problem. Um, when you look at turbocharged engines, they put a lot of stress on the pin, like a big power motor. A lot of times you can see that, um, you know, the uh, bushing and the rod is really digging into here and you can actually see a lot of wear in this area. But with WPC, that almost goes away. Finally, you have your uh, piston rings. These are the compression rings, and uh, this is a gapless type ring. One thing you don't probably realize is that the rings create more friction than any other part of the engine. Like probably 50% of the total amount of mechanical friction of the engine is generated by the rings. So when your rings have this slippery hard surface, um, it, it reduces a lot of the friction. Um, when your rings get worn, your ring seal declines and you start losing compression and power. Uh, this, helps, this helps your ring seal. And also with the new low tension rings, they want to be all flexible to conform to the cylinder and seal better. Uh, this actually you know, helps with the um, fatigue of that and um, helps like a thin ring uh, hang in there even after a long, a long use. So it really increases the life of the rings, probably doubles it, we've found. Um, one thing though, that if you've WPC treated your rings, uh, the initial breaking of your engine might take a little bit longer. So you have to watch your cylinder wall finishes, you have to watch your clearances, and instead of your rings breaking in almost immediately, uh, it, it, it might take like a few dyno pulls to actually get these to seat, but that's not a big deal. It taking longer to break in also means it takes longer to wear out. Finally, there's the block. Uh, the block, we uh, mask everything off and WPC the cylinder walls. Um, 
What we've noticed is like this cylinder wall dimensional shift, like if the engine's been run hard for like a few races, we tear it down. Normally we notice that the cylinder walls can shift like even a couple thousandths. With WPC, that shifting uh, is, we don't see that hardly at all. So it stabilizes the cylinder walls. You get that hard crystallized uh, surface finish. So we don't hardly see any bore wear. And uh, of course, half of the friction that the rings create, or, or more than that, or a lot of it has to do with how slippery the bore is. So a lot of the friction is reduced um, in the bore as well. Now what we do is um, we hone the block as normal. Um, nowadays you want to use a really fine stone. Uh, then we plateau hone it with a cork bonded hone. That kind of knocks the points off of the uh, honing pattern and kind of reduces friction. Then we WPC after that, and that really kind of burnishes in all the, um, the grooves, but they're still there to retain oil, and there's still enough of it there for the rings to seat. It just might take a little longer, but seriously, uh, your rings and your cylinder bores last literally twice as long. Uh, if you're a racer, your engine maintains its power in between freshenings. Like let's say you, you freshen your motor halfway through your season, uh, you, you're probably not gonna hardly lose any horsepower in between your freshening. And then when you do take your engine apart and, and, and give it a freshen up job, uh, the amount that you have to do um, will probably be a lot less. Cause before like maybe you would have to, to hone to straighten out your cylinder walls. Well, now you can just use like a, uh, a brush hone or a dingle ball hone and just rough it, rough it back up and then WPC and put everything back together. So uh, you get more service life and you reduce costs, your parts last longer. Uh, finally, I don't have any here, but um, uh, if we're running a non-coated bearing, now nowadays we run coated bearings a lot um, and we don't take the coating off because I feel like uh, coating kind of helps when you have moments of low oil pressure like starting and uh, Sometimes certain dynamic conditions exist in the engine where the crank will get a little harmonic whip, so you might have a little metal-to-metal -metal contact. I mean, I think the coating helps there, but a lot of bearings, performance bearings, like maybe cleavites, aren't coated. They have that little flash zinc um, on the surface. Uh, those kind of bearings, uh, I, uh, we always WPC treat, uh, and we found that um, it helps them last maybe 50% longer. Uh, WPC has data that some OEMs have done that shows the load bearing capacity of the bearing is up, um, you know, as much as 40% after it's been treated. Uh, so non-coated bearings, we always WPC treat them. So, so far I've been talking about just engine parts and it's safe to say that if an engine has been completely WPC treated, it'll generally have almost twice the service life of a non-WPC treated engine. And engines aren't the only spot where you can use WPC treatment. Um, we use WPC on ring and pinions, on transmission gears, uh, shafts, axle stub shafts, CV joints, anywhere where uh, heat, wear, and strength are a problem. So it works really good in the drivetrain. Uh, another thing we use it for is unlimited slip differentials. Now a lot of you probably have a limited slip and your limited slip chatters and jerks and makes ratcheting noise. And you have to put the uh, additive in your gear oil. And the additive is a friction modifier and it also makes the limited slip work, work less well. Well, if you uh, WPC treat the clutches on your limited slip, it's nice and smooth like you have friction modifier, but you don't need friction modifier and your limited slip locks up just as hard. I mean, it's a huge difference on a limited slip and we recommend it for any limited slip that comes through our shop here. Uh, another place where it works well is on uh, multi-disc clutches. If you do the pressure ring, uh, the pressure face on the flywheel and you do your floaters, uh, you get a lot less of the chattering noise and the clutch engages smooth as butter, like, like it's a carbon clutch. Um, that's a good use and everything lasts a lot longer too. Um, on multi-disc clutches, like there are wet clutches, like you see on uh, DTC trannies, like GTR trannies. 
Uh, if you drive an R35 GTR or a Porsche PDK, you know all the chinging noise and the juddering they make. If you WPC the clutches, a lot of that noise goes away and the engagement gets a lot smoother. And the thing shifts fast and hard still, but it's just smoother and more refined. Probably lasts a lot longer too. So WPC is great stuff and anything that cycles, rubs, or is subjected to a lot of friction and a lot of pressure, uh, WPC is the stuff to use and we're always finding more creative ways to use it. Now if you're interested, we're an authorized WPC dealer, so please follow the link in the description and don't forget to subscribe to Moto IQ and see more interesting tech.